Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Seesaw Tech Integrationist Success Series. We are honored that you are spending time with us here today. And a little bit about me, I'm Angela. I taught kindergarten for 15 years. I had five iPads in my classroom and we were using Seesaw daily. I now lead the community team here at Seesaw. And I'd love for you to connect with me on I'm at Mrs. Gadke. And a few months ago, several months ago, actually, I was really thinking about your role, um, tech integrationists or administrators or coaches that really support and work directly with teachers. And I thought to myself, how can we better support them? How can we give you not only support, but inspiration and connection? So that is why we began hosting these sessions for you. So I want to talk a little bit about what you can expect when you're coming to this series. We are going to talk about a variety of topics. So each month will be a little bit different. We're going to focus on practical ideas and resources that will support you in your role and also get you connected with a community of colleagues. So hopefully you can continue those conversations and again, share great strategies and resources. And as a reminder, please join us. We're going to be here the second Wednesday of each month. For those of you that are here live, you are already set up. You're registered for the next six sessions. But those that might be watching this recording and you're thinking, how can I get in on the next one? Make sure to follow this link to register and join us next month again as well. I also want to let you know that we have a Facebook group devoted for tech integrationists. So that is a great space to connect and, you know, share those ideas directly with other colleagues that are in the same position as you. And just a reminder as well, this series is, is not devoted to showing you how to use Seesaw, but instead we're going to be talking about a variety of topics to support teachers and specifically needs you have in your role. However, we do have an amazing resource for teachers that is specifically about teaching them to use Seesaw and giving them great examples and activities and ideas. And that is our PD and your PJs program. We offer free live webinars every month and we actually just started our July session yesterday. So this is a great resource as you, if you haven't yet shared this with your teachers or if you haven't yet attended one either. So I think I've sped through all of that. And now today, the topic at hand is six tips for back to school with Seesaw. You'll notice there is a bit.ly here that will take you directly to the slides for this session. So make sure you follow that. But if you registered, no worries. They are going to be coming directly to you in an email as well as this recording. But I am super excited to have two amazing technology integrationists with us here today. They support, I don't even know, countless schools that are in implementing Seesaw. So first, I'd like to introduce Heather. Hey, Heather. Hey. Hi there. I'm so excited. Um, I am a tech integrationist that works mainly with elementary schools. We just, um, like Angela said, we have Seesaw for schools in all of our elementary schools. We just did that last year and there's about 42 of them, I wanna say. And then we also added a couple of middle schools as well. So we are really like getting in the swing of all that. And just like Angela said, love for you to follow me on Twitter as well um, so we can connect. And then we have Joni with us here as well. Welcome, Joni. Hello, everyone. I'm Joni Quintavalli, and I am also a technology integrationist. Um, our district isn't quite as big as Heather's, but um, we have 16 elementary schools, and we are uh, Seesaw for schools in all of those uh, elementaries, K through five. We started a process of adding grade levels year by year, and we're happy to say that this year is our full first full year of K-5 integration with Seesaw. We're really excited to use it. And I'm also on Twitter if you'd like to follow me on Twitter. Yay! Well, we've, we've got some real pros with us here today, but just to give you an idea of what we're going to jump into, so we're going to talk about open house ideas, 
connecting families and supporting teachers. So when we talk about open house, for example, we're talking about any sort of face-to-face -face event at your school. Maybe it's back to school, maybe it's drop off school supplies. And then we're gonna move on from that to really think of ways to support your teachers that are just getting started with Seesaw. I also want to mention as well, we are going to throw tons of ideas at you and lots of resources. And you will have to obviously use your best professional experience and judgment to determine what resources might fit appropriately with where your teachers are at in their Seesaw knowledge. So some of these are going to be great for teachers that are just brand new, have never used Seesaw. And some of these examples are going to work really well for teachers that have used Seesaw for a while, or like Joni and Heather have explained that they have entire schools that have been using Seesaw as well. So I, I almost call this an idea buffet. So we're going to show you a lot of things. You're going to be able to pick and choose what works for you. So let's get started with our first tip. We're back to school with Seesaw. It is really foundational to set up your Seesaw classes, right? Nothing is going to happen until those classes are set up. So let's dive into that for just a moment. So if you are using free Seesaw, do you wanna jump into this, um, Heather? Yes. So um, if you are using free Seesaw, uh, you want to make sure that you have all your teachers creating the new class um, and they're adding their students. And uh, most of you might have seen already, but they've added to where they can even import from Google Classroom already. So if they've added their students that way, they can easily import or they can just follow the steps. So what we've done, um, is create printables for you to give to your teachers. Um, and these pictures are linkable to um, slides that you can print off as PDFs or you can send them in as email um, pictures or however you would like to do that. But um, it walks them through kind of just quick and simple how to create their class. So um, even if you just want to hang this up in the workroom, um, just to make sure before the, the kids come um, with that free Seesaw version that they've created their class and also how to connect the students, whether it's by QR code, email, um, whatever it is, there those two links right there will get you to those resources. Now let's talk a little bit about paid Seesaw for schools. Joni, and you have some tips for that. So yeah, so obviously in paid Seesaw for schools, um, the teachers are used to using it. The families are, are somewhat connected. But the biggest thing that we want to stress with those teachers is that please, please, please do not create your own classes. So we use a communication strategy where we send out an email communication to teachers, administrators, and tech coaches to, with several pieces of information. One, the classes will be archived on this specific date because we allow those classes to exist over the summer. And then the date that the new classes will be available is also uh, shared with all the teachers. And that's just a really important piece to remember so they don't create their own classes because they will do that. Second thing is one of our biggest questions is, I don't even remember how to sign into Seesaw and, and I have no idea what my password is. So we've created a couple of resources for you to help with that, especially the password. Uh, on the left side is a printable version of did you forget your Seesaw password? And then on the right um, is also a, a printable for you. It's very specific to our own school district because this, your school, your your setup for CSAS for schools may be different um, than this printable shows. So you may have to customize a tutorial that shows them how to sign in basically with your version. In our school district, we don't have the teachers use Google sign in. And that's a really important thing to note because they try to often and then they're not finding their classes. So those those two printable resources may be very helpful for you. All right, so let's go into tip number two for back to school. You're really supporting teachers that are integrating Seesaw. Let's talk about a welcome post. Now, when we talk about a welcome post, we're, we're giving you ideas for what can be waiting inside the Seesaw class for families. We want to have something there, so we're starting to build that relationship. 
and connection with families to start that engagement. So we have three ideas for you to have your teachers have something in their class before families are actually connected. So Heather, start telling us some ideas here. All right, so the first one that we um, want to talk about is just putting in a photo of you. And um, a lot of times people want to use, you know, bitmojis and stuff like that, but I just really encourage you to use a picture of yourself. Like this one is just like a picture of someone with their cat. I mean, it could be you in your classroom, um, and then you can use the creative tools and write on top of it with your name um, and like here the cat's name. So the resource on the right there just kind of walks you through um, how to, you know, get there, <laughs> how to kind of post that welcome photo easily. And we want to make sure that the teachers, when they're posting this, they're marking all students. So that way, whenever any of the parents um, join the class, they will be able to see that welcome um, post. So the next thing, if they want to take it a little bit further, they're going to maybe possibly create a video using Seesaw. So on the left here is a picture of me, <laughs> but uh, it's actually a video I created um, just to kind of welcome people to a class. And so they can add captions on the bottom um, and just have a picture of them talking or on the right, um, they can have more of pictures and with the video feature in Seesaw, it's great because they can pause and go to a different spot in their room or a different spot around the school um, and just make it as simple or um, advanced as they would like. But it's a great way to just kind of introduce themselves as they go. So then another way is the collage with the creative tools. Um, and so now, as you know, yay, lots of claps and cheers, but you can add multiple photos um, to the canvas. So that way you can add multiple photos about you as a teacher, or you can um, add, you know, things about around the classroom, however you wanna do that, but just something to where when the parents go in there, not only they can see that, but they can show this, their child um, that as well. And since it's posted to all the students, whenever the students log in, they can see um, that picture or video or collage, however you want to put that in there. All right, so tip number three for back to school, we're gonna start talking about open house preparations and things that you might wanna have ready or your teachers have ready as they start Seesaw. So the first thing is I want to just let you know that we have some websites for you that teachers can use to really introduce Seesaw to families. So, so the first one mentioned there is our family's website. When you go there, it's really set up that it could be something that is projected on a smart board or shared with families in a link that gives a quick little intro video of Seesaw and then really walks them through the, the why and how to get connected to Seesaw. We also have a new video on our main website that is listed here that basically just kind of gives an overview about what Seesaw is all about. So that is also a helpful resource. And Joni, you're gonna talk about this idea. Okay, so we know that different people have different ways of introducing families to their classrooms. Some people have open houses, some people have back to school nights, some people have curriculum nights. That, that all happens differently depending upon your situation. But we would like to make sure that our families have what they need at those events. So the in Seesaw for Schools, these, these packets would apply only to new families because as you know, the benefit of having Seesaw for Schools is once a family is connected, to their students journal then they stay connected until they leave the school so it's kind of an awesome benefit so for families that are not yet connected we always try to invent new ways to invite them in so the, you'll see the principles that are on this page are a welcome to seesaw benefits uh, printables so that you can they can see exactly what seesaw can do for them and the benefits and why they should join and then secondly is to print out the individual QR code for each student. And again, because of security, you wanna make sure that that student's name is on the flyer so that the, the correct flyer goes home with the correct family. Love that, thanks Joni. And Heather, what's this idea? 
So um, this is an idea that I did when I was in the classroom and I um, used, like I had the kids that first week of school color in a picture of themselves. Um, and then whatever post they did, we create a QR code to put in a hallway. Um, but if you have an open house before the school starts, um, you can always do this for either the kids that you had in the previous years or possibly just putting QR codes in the hallway um, to just share some things that you've done in the classroom, however you wanna do that. But um, my parents loved always coming in and just seeing like a different QR code on there that they could scan um, just to kind of see what was going on in our classroom. I will say this slide and the next one that I'm about to talk about are more advanced. Like they're more for people that have been using Seesaw, um, whether it's free or paid, but it's just, it might be a little overwhelming for those people that are creating their first class for the first time. <laughs> um, so the next one is um, just some ways that you could possibly integrate Seesaw during your open house or meet the teacher night um, and putting those activities in there to give the students something to do and also kind of introducing them uh, to Seesaw and the way things work. So you could, um, you know, have them take pictures while parents are filling out information, um, just a couple of different ideas. So I've linked the three different activities that you can share with um, your fellow teachers and they can put it in there, change however they want, but just a couple of ideas. Again, this is more for advanced um, teachers who know Seesaw and have kind of been working with it for a little bit of time. All right, so tip number four for back to school with Seesaw is really connecting families. And we are going to start just sharing some ideas for getting everyone involved because we know that connection between home and school is really critical. I'm, I'm hearing a slight echo, so we might have to mute some people, but we'll see how it works out. I know you wanted to start talking about this, Heather. Yes, okay, so um, especially with this, the paid Seesaw for Schools, you want um, what we put here like a connection station because we really wanna make sure the families are all connected. And I know sometimes with us, especially since we've only had Seesaw for Schools for one year, we still have those parents who um, are not connecting to their child's journal. So really just the goal here is to make it easier for the families to get connected and to see why. And that's one reason why we mentioned making that welcome post to have in there. Um, so the, thing, the things we're gonna talk about, it's really, you can have a table set up at your open house, meet the teacher night, um, and the tech integrationist can be sitting there. You could even have counselors there if you have everything kind of ready for them to go um, and do what they need to do. But just something where the parents, it makes it really easy for them to get an account and to see song get connected to their child's journal. So one thing that I did is I created QR codes for each um, teacher's class and so Angel, if you'll go to the next slide, um, the, the way that I did this, and also Joni will talk about this too, is when you click on plus families, it you can go into um, the email where it shows the email. And then um, can you go to the next slide there, Angela? It's not showing on. Yeah, my I did, but I think my I think my connection is bad, so I'm. I was like, okay, it's showing here, but I just going to keep up talking. Can you see it now? Slides. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, perfect. So um, over here on the left, um, so just clicking on the plus families um, in the view sample email, and then there's a picture of that sample email there, and all I did was I took that link from the different. Um, classes and um, I created QR codes for each of those links for those teachers and the great thing about this is that QR code never changes so you could even give it to the office staff for when new students come and the parents can scan it right then and get um, into their child's class if they have already you know been enrolled and they're in the system um, so I just created pages with those QR codes, had them out on the table. So when the parents passed by, all they had to do is find their child's teacher, scan the code, 
and then they get into their account. And then I'm gonna pass it to Joni here because she did something similar um, and also gave us a little how-to video on how to do that. So uh, as Heather mentioned, one of the, the things that happens with Seesaw for Schools is we, we get a large number of families connected right off the bat, but there's always uh, more that we try to reach. And it's been a big goal of ours since we implemented Seesaw for Schools. So we, st we started having these connection stations at different events too. Um, not just open house, but even later in the year during conferences. So to make it easy for teachers, because it's always something that is difficult for them once they've started rolling with their classes, we used a different method, very similar to Heather's, where we used the email invitation and we went to the uh, link to the, the sign-in page for the families. And then we created on one device and uh, web links to those individual teacher classrooms. And we have that at a station, again, very similar to Seesaw Connection Station. And when the parent arrives to the station, we ask them, "Have you? are you connected to Seesaw yet? And if they weren't, they simply click on their teacher's name and it takes them to the exact same place where they sign in. And what's nice about it is if they have questions or they, they're struggling, there's, there's someone there to help get them connected. And oftentimes, uh, what we see happen is there'll be a couple that will come up to the station and one of the, the husband or the wife will say, I'm already connected. Well, you need to get connected. So it really helps get more than just one family member connected as well. And as Heather mentioned, uh, we I created a little clips video, which is linked at the bottom, that will show you how to make these web links if you don't already know how to do so. So hopefully that will be helpful to help get additional family members connected. Yeah, I love I love both of these ideas. And I think the one thing that I'm just going to mention is that in both of these examples, this is going to have families join via the specific invite. And once they connect, they actually are not going to get in until the teacher has approved them individually. So keep that in mind as well if you're thinking, well, how does this work uh, with making sure this is private? So keep that in mind as well. And then Joni, you had also, we're going to just briefly mention this for families that are new to your school. So again, if, if you just to remember that if you, as the year goes on or at the beginning of the year, important to you can you can check each seesaw teacher or each classroom to see how many family members are connected and either do this for teachers or remind them to print the sign up letters for new families um, we do the printing for them again just to make it easy for teachers as they're you know really crazy busy trying to get ready for open houses or the beginning of the school year And then these are just two printables that are just really handy to have for any family that's downloading the app on their phone. So these are linked in the slides that you'll be getting after the session. And then Joni, you wanted to talk a little bit about what you do in your district to even provide a little bit more information for families. So we feel it's very important to have our families understand what Seesaw is and how it is used. We get great response from families. Families love it. There's no, we haven't had a lot of pushback or uh, negative response to Seesaw. So we want our families to be informed. So we've created a web page that has all kinds of information for families. It has the introduction to Seesaw, what is it video. It shows them the benefits resources. And then we developed some frequently asked questions that we've run into when families you know, first start using Seesaw, but our biggest piece of, of greatness was uh, creating a school help email. So if a family is struggling getting connected, sometimes that's hard for a teacher to even help them. It's hard for them to know how to help them. So we created a Seesaw help email address with our domain, and it actually comes to me. So when, when parents fill out that email or send an email that comes to me and then I can actually be the one that can help get them connected or answer any questions that they have. So that's been a big uh, positive piece for us as well as just keeping our families informed about what great things we're doing in our school district. Love that idea, Joni. So great. And Heather, just a couple of reminders here about free CESA. Yeah, so we just um, wanted to make sure that you are um, printing the 
QR code invitations for them. Um, as far as like kind of what Joni mentioned before, um, and Joni, I think the video invitation was something you had done as well, right? Yes. So what we just try to get families connected or get information to families in so many different ways. And so one of the ways that we've done that is to invite, fa give families a video, like a clips video or something very quick and easy that they can watch a nice short video so that they, if they have questions or they're struggling getting connected or they don't know what they're doing or they don't know what Seesaw is, that they would have a video rep representation of what they need to do to get connected. That's it. Awesome. So let's cruise on to idea number five for back to school with Seesaw. We're going to go into some classroom ideas to really get your space set up if you're a teacher and quick tips that you can share and support as well. So the first one, this is from when I was in my kindergarten classroom, is we had five shared iPads. So it was really helpful to choose the home base for those devices. So that's where they were always located. It made it easy for everyone know, to know where to get a device. And it wasn't left on random tables. They were also always charged and ready to go. So that is just an easy tip first to share with teachers if they haven't thought about that yet. And then also if you're using class code sign-in, if your teachers are working with younger students, it's a great way to keep this class code inside your classroom, but make sure it's not just in one spot. Maybe you have it in four different places so that students can just quickly scan it and keep moving along with, with whatever they're using Seesaw for to you know, explain and reflect and create. So one of the things I just always like to remind you about, and specifically this audience, is that these QR codes are should be secure. And I also warn teachers um, that, you know, sometimes you have people coming into your classroom to support you, or sometimes you might be taking pictures as well. And we never want this QR code to make it into a picture. Sometimes at the beginning of the school year, we have teachers that are super excited that it's the very first day their students are signing into CESAP, and they will take a picture very much like the one pictured here to the left, but their QR code is, is showing loud and clear. So I would just like to kind of share that as well. And in my classroom, I always even put a post-it note over the QR code. So it was, you know, covered up in case, you know, we were taking photos or whatever. It didn't even appear in the background as well. So the next tip I would give, and this works really great for younger students, is to create Seesaw recording spots. So when I in my classroom, I had five spots, one in each corner of the room, and I simply just hung up this recording spot poster, which is linked here to the slides that you'll receive. But it was really a good space for students to go to when they were ready to record audio. It got them away from other peers that were working and also it kind of shifted their thinking, especially with littles, that, oh, this is the time that I'm going to think and explain and reflect on my work as well. And then Heather has some fancier options that she's gonna talk about. <laughs> so just uh, like Angela had mentioned before, there's um, a Facebook group, um, but also Twitter is just, I find so many wonderful ideas on Twitter. So um, both of these pictures are linked to actual people that might be watching right now, I don't know, but um, they, um, posted these and I just think there's so many great ideas that teachers are doing now so I just put on there like you can turn any container or tub sideways like this one or those little foldable um, larger um, I can I don't want to say boxes but you know <laughs> containers that a lot of teachers have yeah. I think they're like five dollars at Walmart um, but uh, they just are turned sideways and kind of provide a little recording spot and then this other one on the right is just like you know boxes wrapped with posters to make it a little bit more fancier um, but I've just seen really anything that um, teachers have just tried to kind of take the supplies that they already have um, turn it sideways and kind of give the students a space to go and record and then the other thing um, I wanted to make sure 
we added on here was just the computer login cards. I think it is so important for um, teachers to do this before the school year starts. Um, so I put a couple of options on here. Now this isn't like for us, like Joni had mentioned, she's not sign in with Google, but we are, we're a complete Google district. So um, for logging with computers, you know, we log in with our, um, you know, district account, but it's pretty much sign in with Google everywhere. Um, but no matter what age, K to five, or <laughs> I don't know, some secondary kids need practice. So you have the option here on the left where the teachers can just copy that slide and then paste the student info in, or I am a huge autocrat fan. So I actually created a video. I will say it's a little bit long because I go step by step, um, which is a little bit more advanced on how to fill out the cards on, you know, automatically. And then on the right, if you guys have never heard of Christine Pinto, she's a, a amazing kindergarten teacher. I think she's only been teaching a couple of years, but anyway, she has a whole login card system that has where you can tape the rows on the keyboard just to help them with typing. And I think not only does that help them with logging in, but also if they wanted to use the note feature or labels or anything like that, um, help them with the typing on the keyboard. And Heather, I loved your video. So I highly recommend anyone watch it. It's great, great tip. All right, so we're gonna go into tip number six for back to school with Seesaw. We're talking about first day posts or even first week posts. We're really trying to create that conversation around learning with families and students as well. So that's why we're kind of giving you some ideas here to really get that engagement started. In my kindergarten classroom, on the very first day of kindergarten, I made it my, you know, my goal to make sure that I kind of caught students in action because I wanted to, again, create a situation where when they went home from that very first day of school, the, you know, the, the, the communication was very different. It wasn't, you know, how did your first day of school go? Oh, it was fine. We didn't do, you know, whatever. It was, tell me about what's happening in this experiment, right? So as a teacher, as a reminder, teachers can always post to the student journal when they are signed in as a teacher as well. And then Joni, I know you've done some similar things in your district with teachers as well. Yeah, we, the, as Angela mentioned, the most important thing is having to show the students in action during, is, is, even if it's on the first day of school, the family members, that, that's what they wanna know, what happened on the first day of school. So we've used you know, having teachers take individual photos of every student in the class or entire class photos. One thing I would mention on this, our school district has a, a policy as far as uh, acceptable use agreements that families sign. So in our school district, if, if they have signed that agreement, then they're, we, it's, a, it's acceptable to take their photos. So you'd wanna make sure that you knew that that was an acceptable thing to do if you're using students in photos. Um, but having students playing with their friends, going on classroom tours, having the student go through the classroom, taking video and explaining different parts of the classroom. And one of the favorite things that we've discovered recently with my student tech team is Boomerang and using Boomerang photos to just show the enjoyment and engagement that they have during their school day. They love it and it's not, not hard to do and the students can definitely figure it out. And then in addition to that, as I mentioned, you want your families to have a conversation with what's happening at school. So looking for things that are conversation starters for families. This activity is an activity in Seesaw and this would probably be one where you, if you were going to use it, you would be a Seesaw user before attempting this one, but um, explaining all of the friends that you met during the day, because one of the biggest pieces with social emotional learning and what parents are concerned about, not, not always academics, but, but what is your school experience like? So I think this great activity about connecting is, is a perfect example of that. And then, in addition, if you are a Seesaw for Schools district, or if you have all of your families connected, just making sure that you communicate to them what happened today or what happened this week. So with the great new exciting tools that we have, you can add up to 25 photos at a time. So you could create an announcement, a first day of school announcement and attach 
using the creative tools, examples of what other things that we did today or what happened today. And I, th I feel like that would also be a great conversation starter for communicating with families. Great tools. And to jump in real quick, Joni, I, I think a lot of times now, like the kids are coming from school care that or daycare or whatever it is that they have all these programs where they take pictures and send it to the parents. So this is a great way to kind of transition the parents as well because they're used to getting that feedback. Right. Um, and so it's definitely a great thing to do. I push that a lot for them to take pictures. Yes. And then once you've been in Seesaw and you've been using Seesaw for a long time, uh, you, the, the ability to locate the first five posts creative tool posts that you are shown when you first create an account. So if you're brand new to Seesaw, the first thing that pops up in your activity library is these getting started with Seesaw posts. Well, after you've downloaded activities, it disappears. So Angela, lovely Angela, gave me this great tip and I thought I would share it with you. So once you've used Seesaw for a while and those first five posts disappear, you would open up your activity, activity library, roll down to the bottom where it says more collections, and then scroll all the way to the right. And then if you click on the getting started activities, they pop back up. What's great about these activities is it's a great way to introduce creative tools to your students if they haven't used Seesaw before, as well as a newer teacher that hasn't used Seesaw. It gives them a great starting spot. And if they can get through those first five posts, they are on their way to being Seesawers. <laughs> I love it. That's a great reminder, Joni. So, wow, we did it. I'm so excited we made it in time here. We were, <laughs> we were concerned we might not make it through, but um, hopefully you've enjoyed these tips. We are going to take some time, just a couple minutes here for questions, but also letting you know that if you haven't connected with our CSAC community yet, on the right hand, you'll see all sorts of spaces where we are located. Make sure to also share these with your teachers. And as a reminder, this type of webinar is specifically for you, tech integrationists, but we do offer those series of webinars um, each month called PD in your PJs, which is really all about supporting teachers as they get started with Seesaw. So that's a great thing to share with your teachers as well. We're, we're happy to train the teachers and support them as they get started with Seesaw and uh, also provide you resources in a format like this. So one of the things that I wanna let you know before we head out and go into questions here is we're gonna have a survey pop up when you exit this session today and we would really appreciate if you filled that out. Uh, we wanna know what you would like to talk about in upcoming sessions and any feedback that you have, we greatly appreciate it. So we are gonna look into the questions now but we are so eager to see you next month as well.